this is your boy Lenny, back at it again with another vlog. Last episode, we picked up a new car and started to clean it all up, getting it ready to be my daily driver. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you pause this one, get all caught up to speed, and then come back here for what we have in store. In today's episode, we are going to attempt to transform this car from gold to black. If you enjoy unique car builds and automotive content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on to be the first to know the next time I drop a video. Alright, without further ado, let's get to work. So after cleaning out the interior, I've shifted focus to the exterior and engine bay. With all the grime and gunk hidden in the crevices of the seats, I'm not at all surprised that the engine bay has also built up some debris in its time sitting outdoors, although it's not too too bad. A little vacuuming should do the trick. As you may have noticed, my hood struts are also blown, and the hood must be held up with a stick. We take care of that in a little bit here, so don't worry about that. I would hate to have to carry a large stick with us everywhere we go. Now it's time to focus on the grill and the bumper. If you noticed last episode, those were already painted, but I didn't include the footage there since it's all part of the murdering out process. Removing the grill was a pain because there was one clip that snapped and the screw wouldn't come out with it. After a while though, I did end up getting it off, but now there are only 5 bolting points instead of 6. As with all of my cars, I guess I never end up putting all of the bolts back since it's really inconvenient. As you can see, the bumper has a lot of paint damage on it, and after removing the license plate holder, all the cracked areas started to flake off a lot. It's time to remove the bumper and get everything all prepped and ready for paint. Well that's fun, this thing was already just blown to smithereens. Um, what I like about the Lexus actually is that they have these, they're push, uh, push to pop pins which are pretty awesome. I'm wondering if I was supposed to take them outwards. Well, I think I was. It's weird that you were supposed to push them in. I thought you were supposed to push them in. Guess that works too. I don't know. I don't know how it works. To be honest. I think this bumper is just like the Accord. I think we just need the two 10mm bolts and then we should be good. I need to get through the fender liner on the other side though. This side's pretty okay. Uh, I decided to take off the pass or the driver's side headlight just to see what's behind the bumper because I did get the two screws and I got the middle like cover section but I don't know what's still holding it on and don't want to pull too hard and break anything else so I'm gonna pull off the, the headlight real quick there's only three screws should be good we'll be okay so good thing I did because I did actually just find a new screw uh -huh. that would have been bad if I was trying to pull that so you do actually have to take off both of the front headlights on the ES300 to take off the front bumper. That's kind of annoying, so I'm going to leave that last screw out. Quick release time. You already know. <laughs> also, everything on this car is a 10mm, which is super awesome because I don't need any other tools except for the 10mm. Uh, except for, you know, suspension stuff and, and all that. But everything else, I've found to be a 10mm so far, and I really love that. I, I really don't need anything except for the 10mm. <laughs> So this car has a clean title, but you can see there's damage here. Uh, see how this is like S-shaped right here? It's supposed to be more C-shaped, not like this. <laughs> um, and the fender was kind of pulled out, so I've actually been pulling it out slowly as it's been going, um, but we're gonna fix that as well. It's gonna be prime time after that, but yeah, we're gonna have to take off the bumper. Uh, I did get all the headlights off, and then also there was a second screw right here that I didn't see, I got the top one, and then I was like, why isn't it coming off? It's because there's a second one down there, and that one's a pain to get to, so I've been using this thing. And hopefully that'll get it out, and then we can uh, straighten that bracket out and have a, a nice straight body here. I'm so glad the fog lights actually stayed in. I don't know, oh, you guys can't see it, but the fog lights actually stayed in down here and uh, they didn't rip off with the bumper, which means we don't have to do cable things whenever we try to take off our bumper because it'd be super easy. But yeah, there she is. I just ran to bus by to get this. This is a Bluetooth uh, cassette player. So hopefully that'll work in there. I'm gonna tear it open now and we'll try it out. Let's see what's up. 
Uh, this is actually pretty cool. It has a little like quick call answer button attached and it has a microphone on it, so that'll be interesting. We'll see if it uh, works. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the car now. I didn't like it. Why? Why? As it turns out, my cassette player is kind of janky and broken, so I decided to return the Bluetooth adapter back to Best Buy. We'll probably have to go ahead and grab a hen unit and install it soon here because I am really getting sick and tired of using my AirPods all the time. Moving on to the grill now, I've gone ahead and set up a nice little area to paint it on. As with all painting, I sanded the piece first and then laid a couple coats of primer, followed by a couple coats of black paint. There it is. It's all black now. Let's go put this on the car. Also, I got the accord put back together, but we're uh, actually raising the car a little bit right now. Just finished putting the grill back on. Already a thousand times better in black, so we're gonna go ahead and redo all of it. Make sure we get our black housing headlights as well, and then we'll do the whole bumper, whole front end. Um, you still gotta take out all the little dents up in the hood. I don't know if you can see all those little dents in there. Yep. Those uh, are probably from hail, but I'm not quite sure. But yeah, we'll go, go ahead and probably get some Bondo and do filler unless we can find a good way to suction cup it up. Alrighty, so first things first, we have to go ahead and sand down the bumper so the primer can stick to it properly. While sanding by hand passes time, I ultimately decided to switch over to the orbital sander because my hands were getting a little tired after just a few minutes. I noticed that there were a few dents in the bumper itself that would show through if I didn't take care of them, so I ended up breaking out the Bondo and laying a couple layers to smoothen out the dents. After cleaning the bumper up and removing all the dust, the next step was primer. A couple coats later, and we're ready to move on to the black paint. I low-key found a couple of paint cans lying around that had a little bit of black left in them, so I used them to paint the bumper. From afar, you can't really tell, just don't look too close. For how little time I spent preparing the bumper, it actually doesn't look half bad. After letting it dry for a day, it's now time to install the bumper. And yes, I do still have my stick with me. Don't worry, those hood struts are about to be installed in a second here. Thinking about it now, I've always used that exact same stick while working on the Accord too. I didn't realize how cheap and easy it was to swap out the hydraulic hood stands, and it makes working on the car so much easier. And they're only about $20 to get new ones, so definitely pick those up if yours are failing. Alrighty guys, so now that we've finished that up, um, all my hood struts actually work now, which is a prime time, but yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, I think we're gonna go ahead and order tint next, and then do that, and it should start looking pretty good, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy some wrap as well for the car, I'm gonna do the whole thing in black.
it's gonna be safe. Those of you who have been watching the channel for a little bit know it took me so long to finally get coilovers and wheels for the Accord, and now with the Lexus, we've kind of expedited the process. I've picked up some max peating rod coils for the car, and they have adjustable height, front camber, and dampening. I'd say that's a pretty solid steal for 300 bucks, since even race lands with no adjustable dampening and camber go for around $400 now. Who said that anything in this world was ever easy? As I've come to expect when working on cars, we've run into yet another issue. The car came with OEM lugs, which means that each wheel also has a locking nut as well. I found the key inside the center console, but it appears to be pretty stripped. I tried for a while with my breaker bar, and even went as far as going to buy an impact gun, but all of these attempts failed to break any of those locking keys off. Eric even had me come into Subaru to see if the text there could get to it, but once again, to no avail. Of course, there's one more place I haven't tried yet, and that's... You guessed it, Tire Dogs. The guys at Tire Dogs made slight work out of it with their hammers and air impacts, and that was all I needed to continue working on installing the coils. Let's get back to that now. As it turns out, buying an impact was key to helping me save some time while working on cars. I probably should have bought them a long time ago, but I've been pretty lazy and there aren't necessarily the cheapest tools you can buy. Also, learning how to do things by hand first is a great way to get efficient at a task, whether it be taking off the wheels, or putting them back on, or working on suspension components. I've been swapping the Accord suspension for so long without power tools, I can do it pretty quick now. You can see the huge difference between the OEM strut and the max peating rods. Although they are thinner, the weight savings are minimal. I am glad to add that much more functionality to them for just about the same weight though. The general rule for adjusting coilovers is to do the balancing outside the car and then making the micro adjustments when they're fully installed. Fuck this thing is. It took me a little while to get all four corners done since the rear passenger side strut wouldn't come out for quite a bit, but now we have successfully installed all four coils. However, we aren't done quite yet because with great fitment comes great responsibility, and that responsibility for me is to get new wheels, which Raphael has graciously provided for my usage on the Lexus. I also want to give a huge shout out to Alex and Eric for helping me install the coils as well as Raf for letting me borrow his set of wheels which have only ever been on Eclipses and the Accord before this. I ended up buying a roll of wrap to start turning the car black and from here on out the vision starts to come alive. We started the front end of the car in Eric's garage and with the two front fenders as test panels. They came out pretty well, so I spent the rest of the coming week wrapping one panel at a time. So I've decided to just go ahead and wrap the hood anyway. It's a pretty easy part, and I really don't care that much about the dents. Um, eventually, we'll take the wrap off of the hood and either bondo it. I just hammered it a little bit, um, although most of the... Uh, most of the dents are actually along all of the cross beams that support or that create support for the hood so basically we can't hit those out so I did get like three or four of them out but it's not that great so I'm gonna head and wrap it anyway and then eventually either we'll get a new hood or something else like that uh, or we'll repair this one so yeah anyways let's get to it Alrighty, well there she is, all smoothened out. I gotta cut the rest of this and then hood will be done, that'll be sick. Full front end's black now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alrighty, so I finished another door. Uh, I actually did the other side as well. So that's looking nice as well. Heck yeah, I'm excited to have the whole thing done. But uh, I think that's where we're going to stop for today. Still got to figure out the trunk um, and all that good stuff. So yeah, but um, maybe we'll work on tinting the windows next. I didn't get to finishing the whole thing yet. However, Tony has offered to help me with the roof and rear quarters, and I'm super thankful and excited to bring the car into the shop and finish the transformation. And that will do it for today's video. In the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and take the car over to Tony's shop, get it all wrapped and finished in black. Maybe we'll go ahead and tint the windows as well, and then we'll figure out what we wanna do with the rest of the build. If you guys have any suggestions on what you wanna see done next to the car, make sure you drop a comment down below, and I'll be reading those and looking for your suggestions. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace!